Welcome to Tusker Basics. Before we move ahead with the demo, let's run through some basic terminologies. A project is a collection of related test cases. Suites and sections allow you to organize test case inside a project, just like you use folders to organize documents. Project contains suites, suites contain sections, and sections contain test suites. To create a project, click on all projects, the main menu, and then click on the new button to create a blank project. You can also copy an existing project. Let's copy a project. Here, you can enter a new name, for example, enter window shopping. Set the project state to active and choose your team. You can assign different roles to different members to control their privileges. For example, Joe is a tester, which means he can only add results in test runs. Andrew is a lead, which means he can also add or edit test cases. Grace is a manager, which means she can do whatever Andrew can, plus delete test cases. Managers can also run reports. All these roles and privileges are fully customizable. Let's submit. As you can see, a copy of this project along with all its test cases has been created. A test case tests a specific condition in a system. We'll start where we left off, that is on the test cases page. The page is divided into two parts. On the left hand side, we have the test suites and their sections, while on the right hand side, we have the test cases. Currently, the all here indicates that we are seeing all test cases in this project. All the items next to the folder icon are the test suites. Let's click on a suite. We can see its sections, listing, filtering, sorting and searching. On the right hand side, we can see all the test cases in the finding product suite. If we click on a section, we will only see the test cases in the listing section. You can hover on a section to see its actions. You can reorder, edit it or delete it. You can hover on a suite to see its actions. You can reorder, add a section, edit the suite or delete it. Let's add a section. You can create an empty section or you can copy a section from an existing project. This will copy the section and all its test cases into this project. To add a suite, click on the folder plus icon. You can create a blank suite or you can copy it from any existing project. This will copy the suite and all its sections and test cases into this project. Let's create a test case. To add a test case, click on the new button, give it a name, pick the suite and section. Clicking on this plus icon helps you create options on the fly. Now let's enter the steps. Here we can see that we are entering the instructions and the expected results separately. You can customize to combine them if you wish. This is rich text, so you can really add style to your test cases. You can also add tables. You can also add images from files or even from your clipboard. Let's add this logo. You can even resize images. This test plan is a custom field we added. Let's add it to the quick and dirty test plans. You can also attach files if you wish. For now, let's save. The test case has been added in the new test suite. You can click on the test case to view it.
Now, let's look at how to update multiple test cases at once. This is a very popular feature. Let's select a few test cases. You can see these two actions, edit and delete. Let's click on edit. You can see that you can set attributes of the selected test cases including custom fields. Let's change the test plan. This is a custom field that I have already created and enter quick and dirty. Let's save. Now all the selected test cases have been updated. You can also filter test cases. Click on filter. Let's select something that we did recently and go. Now you will only see those test cases here where the test plan has the quick and dirty option. To remove the filter, click on the delete icon. Now the filter has been cleared and you are seeing all test cases in the project. Tasker provides comprehensive import and export capabilities. Let's first export the current project's test cases. You can use this filter if you want to export only a subset of the test cases. For now, we'll export all test cases. The file has been downloaded. Let's open it. We have opened it in Excel, but you can use any other spreadsheet too. Let's make some changes. Let's change the name of this test case. Let's all replace price with cost in this list. As you can see, three test cases have been modified. You can even add test cases. Let's add one. We will add it under a new suite. Let's call it promotions. Let's add it under the new user section. You can also set steps, custom fields and other attributes for this test case. Save the file. Now we will import this file. As you can see, the name has been changed. You can also see that the promotion suite has been added and a new test case has been added in it as well. You can see that using import and export is easy and very convenient to manage your test case. A test run is a collection of test cases along with their execution statuses. As we know, we can create test runs that include all test cases in a project or a subset. Let's now create a test run in our current project window shopping. Click on test runs. Click on new. Let's give it a name. Give it a deadline. And for test cases, you can see that you can include all test cases, specific test cases or the most interesting one, matching a filter. Let's use our custom field, test plan to only select the quick and dirty test cases. You can see that these test cases match the filter. Let's select this and save the test run. You can now see the test run has been created and all test cases have been marked as untested. The next step is to assign test cases to our testers. Let's do that. First, we select a few test cases and click on assign to Let's select Joe the tester and save. We can see that these two have been assigned to Joe. Let's assign some test cases to Andrew as well.
and let's assign sum to Greaves. Now let's see how our testing load has been distributed. To see that, click on the test runs dashboard and scroll down to the work distribution widget. Here we can see a bar chart of testing work by tester. The bars are calculated based on the estimated time for each test case. You can reassign test cases in the same way we saw earlier to redistribute the load. First, you should filter test cases assigned to you, so let's do that. Now you're seeing test cases assigned to you. Click on a test case. You can see what you're supposed to do on the left. And on the right, you can see a place to add results. Let's add a result. In the status, we can see various options. They are customizable and you can add your own. We will mark this one as passed. Enter the time it took to execute the test case and click on save and next. This will save the result and take you automatically to the next test case. The workflow is quite efficient. Let's mark this one as failed. One thing I'd like to add is that if you want, you can even capture custom fields here. Now we can see the status has been updated. There are other ways to add results. You could select test cases and use the bulk add result button to add results. The form is similar to what we saw earlier. We can also add results individually in pull down for the past test case. This is the test run page and you can see a lot of testing has been done here. At the top, you can see the overview. We can see that some test cases are still untested, some have passed, some have failed, while some are in retest. The dashboard gives you a more detailed view of the progress. The progress widget is a burn down chart. The dotted gray line shows you the ideal burn line while the blue line shows the remaining test cases. The next widget is the pie chart that shows the overview. The next chart shows the work distribution. We have already seen this earlier in the demo. The next widget shows the plan versus actual time by resource. This can show you who are the stars and who are the laggards. If you dig deeper, you may even realize that some of the estimations are not accurate and help you build a more realistic schedule in the future. Finally, we have the activity log, which is the running log of events happening in this test run. This was the dashboard for a test run. We also have a similar dashboard for the project. This looks similar but has data across all active test runs in this project. Settings and customizations are available in the administration menu. Let's start with users. You can add, edit or delete users from here. Next is roles. Here you define roles and their privileges. Your account will already have three roles, lead, manager and tester with the relevant privileges, but you can also customize them and add your own. The next interesting one is result statuses. Here you can customize the result statuses or add your own. Next is custom fields. This is a list of custom fields. You can create your own custom fields. You can attach fields to test cases or results. We support many types of custom fields. You can also attach custom fields to specific projects. The next interesting one is test case types. This allows you to categorize your test cases. You can use them in filters and reports. Next is webhooks. This allows for easy integration of Tusker with other systems including your homegrown ones. Whenever a result is added, modified or deleted, Tusker will do an HTTP post on your URL with the result data. Then we have audit logs. Here you can see a log of all important events in Tusker that is who did what and when. You can click on this icon to see the details. Next is perhaps the most important one, the recycle bin. Accidental deletes are common 
and the recycle bin protects you from lost work. As you can see, you can recover projects, suites, sections and even test runs. One thing to note is that items in the recycle bin are counted towards your usage. So, if you are nearing your limits, you should clean this up. Another thing is contextual help. On many pages, you will see this icon. Clicking on it will take you to the appropriate section in your documentation. Click on the user icon. You can edit your profile, change things like your time zone or date format. You can change your password. You can change your email. Click here to get your API key. This will take you to the getting started guide while this will take you to your help manual. Use this to open a ticket with our support team. And finally, we have the sign out button. Happy testing!